Welcome back. Today we're going to look at oil on water, bubbles and thin film interference. You'll notice that Lyca isn't with us today. She's off with Barry and more of that at the end. So first, a little bit of a story. It was chucking down with rain the other day and I was walking back home through school and I went past the groundsman's hut and they'd clearly been pouring petrol or oil into one of the lawn mowers and they'd spilt some. And there was a stream of water flowing over the tarmac and on top of that water were fantastic bright colours of the rainbow. And it got me thinking, I should make a film about thin film interference. So, if you look at these pictures, you'll notice that on top of the water, there's a sort of slick layer, and this is the petrol or oil that's gone onto the water, and it floats on top because it's less dense. But what's interesting is you see stripes of colours, and the colours are very specific. They're like the colours in the rainbow, and they're sort of separated. And what I wanted to do is to try and explain to you how those colours form, because you will have seen them before in other situations. It's also interesting to look at the uh, video because um, there's some other physics going on. Well, there's always other physics going on as well. And if you look at the edges of the flow, you can see where it flows in sort of curled up regions. You get um, turbulent flow and in the centre you see laminar flow. Now, you wouldn't normally see this because what you've got to remember is that petrol, water and most oils are pretty transparent. So why suddenly do they stop being transparent and why do they show these beautiful colours? With all this thin film interference in mind, we bought Barry a bubble machine, and to begin with he was a little bit nervous about it, but I think he seems to enjoy it now. Now, he doesn't know a great deal about thin film and interference and quarter wave plates yet, but I'm sure he will in the future, but he's having lots of fun playing with it. And, of course, bubbles behave in exactly the same way. They're a thin film of um, bubble liquid, um, so they have a very small thickness. And when the thickness approaches that of the wavelength of light, you get interference happening. And that also gives you all the wonderful colours. And the colours you see in a bubble depend on how thick the film is at that point. So now for a bit of an explanation, and it's not an easy one. I'm going to simplify a bit, but you get the general idea. And that's the important thing when you start understanding the physics of situations around you. You can't explain this one without knowing that light is a wave. Uh, these colours that you see coming off thin films are only produced by the wave nature of light. And it's that I'm going to try and explain now. So... We're saying that light's a wave, and looking at this experiment is going to prove that fact. So, what you need to know is that when oil forms these colours on water, or you get very, very thin films and you see colours in them, there are different layers. And in the case of the pictures I've shown you so far, the layers are the air, the petrol or oil, the water, and then the road. And we're particularly interested in two layers, that between the air and the oil or petrol, and the petrol and the water underneath. And it's those two places where we get reflection of the light waves coming in. And that's key to the explanation of what's happening here to produce colours. So now we've established there are two interesting layers. What happens is the light wave comes in and it reflects off the surface of the oil. But not all of it reflects. Some of it goes through the oil and then reflects off the boundary between the oil and the water. So you've got another wave going in and reflecting back out to your eye as well. But if you think about it, if you've got a thickness of oil, one wave has reflected off the surface, the other part of the wave has reflected off a slightly deeper bit, and you'll notice it's gone through the oil and back uh, through it again, so it's gone a little bit further. And if it's gone a little bit further, that wave has got behind. There's a phase shift. Now, the next thing you'll notice, and this adds a bit of a complication, is that when you look at the colours in the photographs where the oil is on the uh, water, 
you'll notice that specific colours can be seen by the eye. So what that means is only those colours are preferentially coming off the surface of the oil and the other colours aren't. But in different places, you see different colours. So what's happening is a specific wavelength of light, a specific colour, is making it to your eye. In other words, it's not going all the way through and out the other side. So we need to add to the explanation reflection a little bit here to explain that. So let's see if we can do it and get ready for a little bit of a complex explanation. The crucial thing to remember is the light reflects off the surface and light is a wave. And when light reflects off an oil surface with air above it, the wave inverts. In other words, a peak coming in reflects as a trough. You can demonstrate this with a slinky spring by uh, flicking a slinky spring against a hard area and the wave will flip over. It'll get 180 degrees out of phase. But the light that goes in and reflects off the bottom of the film goes a quarter of a wavelength distance into the film and a quarter of a wavelength out of the film. So that too is half a wavelength out of phase. So you've got a wave coming in, half a wavelength out of phase. Let's say a peak turns into a trough. A wave going in and then coming out. So that peak also is half a wavelength out of phase. So we get two troughs coming off the surface and they will constructively interfere at that wavelength and produce that colour. So I hope I haven't mystified you or lost you there. It's not an easy explanation just with hand waving. But this only works if light's a wave. You have to imagine the wave coming off the surface and also coming off the bottom of the oil. Those two wave fronts coming into your eye and adding up constructively and therefore you see that colour. But the crucial thing is light has a whole range of wavelengths and not all of them will line up peak to peak. Different wavelengths will line up peak to trough and destructively interfere. And so you won't see those colours coming off the surface for that thickness. If you've got a different wavelength, then you'll need a different thickness of the oil film to give that specific colour coming off the surface. So the reason you see different colours is the layer of oil sitting on the water is different thicknesses. And it's actually about a quarter of a wavelength thick. And it's a quarter of a wavelength thick in the places where you see a specific colour coming off. That will be a quarter of that wavelength for that colour. So different thicknesses have to have different path differences to give constructive interference for the different colours of light. Now, to try and put this into perspective, a wavelength of light is about 550 nanometers. So that's 550 thousand millionths of a meter, which means that the oil film must be very, very thin indeed. And it's interesting because when you first produce these patterns, if you pour the oil on, you don't see the colors. The layer is far too thick. It has to thin out and thin out and flow over the water until it's so thin, it's actually thinner than a wavelength of light. So here's another quick and visual way to show what's going on. If you imagine that this particular wavelength or particular colour of light reflects off the top surface of the oil, and here's the other one that has reflected off the bottom surface of the oil, if they arrive like this with a trough and a trough overlapping, that will make a bigger trough, that's constructive interference, and you will see that colour really brightly. However, if they've travelled slightly different distances that don't quite match up, in other words, this one arrives as a peak and the other surface arrives as a trough, those two, plus and minus, add together to make zero. And that colour won't be seen. That's destructive interference. So it's only for particular thicknesses and particular wavelengths where you get constructive interference and you see a particular colour reflecting off the thin film. So as I said, it's exactly the same process when you've got an air 
bubble interface or bubble liquid interface. So when you blow bubbles, when they get very, very thin, you also see these colours. And when you see different colours, you know that the bubble liquid has different thicknesses and the thicknesses are approaching a quarter that of the wavelength of light. It's one of the smallest, thinnest things you will ever make in your life. So give it a go. Get outside and blow some bubbles. Well, I do hope you enjoyed that video and thank you for sticking with me. It's not an easy explanation, but again with physics, sometimes if you just talk about things a bit, as time goes on, your understanding of it becomes better and better. But at least today, we know that thin films really are thin and we know that light is a wave. Anyway, I shall be making another video soon and I look forward to seeing you then.